So if you're waiting for me to push and prop and do all that kind of stuff, you show up to get it. I'm in here if these children don't need nobody to push and prop them to get up. Why should we? So
Let me say this. The enemy wanted me to believe it was never meant for the women's conference to be what it is today. He wanted me to believe that there was nothing that I could do because I was too sick. I wasn't able to work like I was able to work before.
We are a giving church. I remember we would stand here until we got it. We're not doing that today. Those days are over. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Those things are, those methods are over. Yes, he wants us to freely give, yes, freely yes, receive. Yes. He's got more for us, people of God. He wants us to be more connected, not just to the house of God. He wants us more connected yes, yes, yes. to those of us who believe in Christ. Yes, that's right. Who know that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. We can ask or think. People of God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say all of that. But I'm trying to encourage us. We have learned to draw our hands back from God. And what I'm talking about, I'm not saying that we have some people, some giving people. Sister Kara Slaughter, can I get you to stand up for a moment? Lady Kara Slaughter, she's out. You're her husband, so you're the better part, another part of her. Please stand. Last night I walked into services that the Women's Conference has sponsored. It has been awesome. It has been wonderful. It has been informative. And that I enjoyed every last bit of it. So can we talk just for a moment? Let's talk about life just for a moment. Life is cruel. Yes, ma'am. Life is unfair. We have mothers that are not good role models. We have fathers that have not been good role models, haven't been there, especially for their daughters. All right. We've had family members and so-called friends of a family that have taken advantage of us in our youth when we were innocent and didn't have the strength to be able to defend for ourselves. We had houses to sleep in. We've had clothes on our backs. We've had a roof over our heads. But a lot of times we didn't have the emotional support we needed. We didn't have the I love you. We didn't have the hug. We didn't have the encouragement to say, you're going to be somebody. We didn't have the encouragement to say, you can do better. We didn't have the encouragement.
because I decided I was going to sit down on my ministry. I made that conscious decision. The Lord had something else in mind. The Lord gave me a word, and as I began to ponder, I said, Father, I don't understand what you're saying. So the first thing he did was he took me to when I was on the playground, um, we'll say early elementary. I wanted to learn how to be and cross over the monkey bars. The first thing was, the first problem why I didn't do it was because I had on a skirt and I was scared that somebody was gonna see under my skirt. So I went home and told my mom, I wanna go and I wanna do the monkey bar. She said, baby, do it. I was like, well, they gonna look under my skirt. She said, baby, mama made sure that you were protected under your clothes. I had on some shorts, because she knew that we went outside to play. So I climbed the monkey bars, I get up there, and then I was stuck. Come on. Because I was short. Yeah. And I didn't know what I needed to do. I saw everybody else just climbing across the monkey bars like it was just something for them to do. Then I realized that I had to stretch out. Come on. Come on. Come on. With my little itty bitty arms, that second bar looked so far away. But I had to stretch past my comfort zone. That's what the Lord told me to tell you all today. To stretch past your comfort zone. Now listen. It may come to a point where you may have to rear back just a little bit extra to get a swing going, to get some momentum going, to get your body moving, just so that you can stretch forward. Last, no, it was Thursday night, I was standing over there. I came, and I came to the conference expecting more. I got some more when I was over there. Then last night, I wasn't expecting anything extra because the Lord had already blessed me with more. Then I got some more. Yes. Come on now. I thought I was finished. Yes. I thought I was good. Yes. I woke up this morning as I prepared my husband to go to dialysis. His catheter had come out. Now y'all, if you don't know anything about a dialysis catheter, Come on. Mm, Jesus, it's in an artery. Yes, My husband was not bleeding out. Come on, God. Huh? Come on. Glory! Come on, God. Glory! My husband was not bleeding out. My husband was not God. bleeding out. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He looked at me. What are we going to do? I don't know what you want to do. Because it's 4 o'clock in the morning, I want to go to sleep. Hold on, I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to rewind just a minute. Last night, after I left this altar, I got back to my seat and the enemy immediately attacked me. And he attacked the person that I was with. I said, God, I gave you a for real yes. And the enemy is mad right now. I got to my house and I said, and I looked in my eye and I said, the minute and the moment that you stretch and you say yes, yes the enemy gets mad. And I refuse to allow him the victory. Okay, now we're gonna go back to this morning. That's right, that's right. Let's go about 4.30, 4.45. We're at St. Joseph Hospital. They started aggravating my husband. Anybody knows Steve knows it don't take much. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm praying. It's like, God, look, this is my best friend, and I got to go before these people, and I need my best friend with me. With me. Yes, God. Never mind the fact yes, what, what I had to do and give to you all. I, it was about me. Okay. As they begin to go through the process, you all, this man was sleep. Sleep. And I'm like, I want, I'm tired. I want to go to sleep. I'm tired. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being tired. I want to go to sleep. 
So I laid my head, because see, at some point you gotta realize that your circumstances aren't the end result. Come on. Let me say it again. Your current circumstances aren't the end result. So I laid my head down, and the Lord showed me as a cook, Come on. as a mother, Come on. as a wife, yes. sometimes we're gonna save food. Right. Now my mother, having us, she taught me how to freeze food right. to hold it. That's right. Cause there would be times when it. she didn't feel like doing right. nothing, she'd go to the freezer, or she'd see one of us really truly, go out to the freezer, and that soup, and them beans, go get them. Cause they feel so good. So, you know, the Lord began to show me a Ziploc bag. All right, all right. Come on, lady. And he showed me the bag just about full. So now Glad has gotten real sophisticated. And they have a folded edge so that when you put something down in it, it can square off. And you can feel it real easy. The father said, stretch the bag just a little bit more so I can give you some more. He said, Charlotte, tell my people they have to be willing to be stretched. And I'm not talking about a little bit of stretch. I'm not talking about just open up enough so you can have your hand hold and get your cup full. I'm talking about stretched. I'm talking about being up till about 12, 1 o'clock in the morning to have to get up at 4.15 in the morning to go and sit in the hospital all day long. I left the hospital. My husband is still at St. Joseph Hospital. He's not here. I left the hospital tired. He said, I stretched you yes, God. so that I could give you more. Yes, God. Because see, I had shut my bag, and I was good with what I got Thursday and Friday. But he wanted to give me some more. But he had to stretch me to get my attention. I walked through the door and I saw Elder, and the first song came to my mind was, stretch out. I said, oh, I was a little girl, I remember singing. That sound getting quiet. Then I got smart and I went to Google. When trouble comes, Say it. 